rightly or wrongly, there's few agricultural practices that stir up controversy like the use of pesticides. 16,000 products on the market, not all of them safe, but we can also thank these pest controlling substances for better quality crops and larger yields. Welcome to this week's show. We're taking a close up look at how pesticides are being used and abused. Coming up this week, the latest buzz in bee research shows common crop pesticides are damaging the insect's ability to navigate home. We visit scientists in France who explain how certain chemicals are contributing to bees' disturbing decline. Next, South Africa's open-door pesticide policy. Why are products banned elsewhere in the world still being used widely? We speak to a victim of pesticide poisoning. And finally, when ducks patrol the paddy fields, we head to Japan where farmers are rediscovering an ancient rice growing technique that boosts production without the need for chemicals. The 1950s is often cited as the beginning of the pesticide era. Since then, use increased 50-fold in 50 years. Stefan uses pesticides for his canola, sunflowers and wheat. Can you tell me what would happen if tomorrow we put a blanket ban on all pesticide use? Today I'd lose half of my yield. Here you can see a healthy plant which has been treated with pesticides. And here's a dead one, it's all yellow, and it won't produce any seed for plants in the future. So that's why without pesticides I lose half of my yield. So we understand that pesticides are obviously useful and they serve an important purpose, but they can also be dangerous to the environment at times. Recent research has shown that some of the most commonly used chemicals are killing our precious bee populations. France Van Katz, Claire Williams and Lara Malul with this next report. Not a day goes by when Dominic Senna doesn't check on his precious honeybees. He's one of a growing number of beekeepers who's chosen to breed his bees in an urban area near Paris rather than deep in the countryside. It might seem like a strange decision but the bees are thriving. Beehives in cities produce about 22 kilograms of honey a year. In the countryside, they only produce 14 kilograms. Pesticides are used much less in cities than in rural areas. And French scientists recently carried out research which found the chemical-based products to be a prime suspect in the killings of countryside bees. They fed a dose of pesticides to a sample of honeybees and then moved them a kilometre from their hive. Radio tags were used to track how many returned home. We were able to show that the honeybees given a non-lethal dose of pesticides became lethargic, which meant they were unable to find their way back to the hive. More than 30% never made it home. But the head of a pesticide lobbying group argues French agriculture needs pesticides, which only harm the environment if farmers don't use the right dose. We need uh, pesticides uh, in France because there are tools which allow the farmers to uh, protect their crop, uh, to uh, regulate the yield and uh, consequently to contribute to the affordability of the food for us as a consumer. But opposition to pesticides is still gaining momentum, and the bee population is continuing to fall. Environmental groups are encouraging pesticide-free farming techniques and more beekeeping to bolster the population. Here in Paris, on the rooftop of the Grand Palais, the historic exhibition hall makes its own honey. With plenty of nearby flowers and trees treated with little or no pesticides, the bees here are doing well. Faced with a declining bee population, we need to do everything we can to save the species by reducing pesticide use, but also by developing initiatives such as beehives in cities, which reinforce the bee population. Bees pollinate one-third of all the fruit and vegetables we eat, so protecting this tiny insect is crucial to the human food chain. This is not an organic vineyard, there's very few pesticides used and no insecticides at all. In recent years, the EU has banned more than 20 chemicals because of serious health risks. But if we look away from France and towards South Africa, we see that 
the very same pesticides that are banned for being dangerous are still being used on a wide scale. Our correspondent in Cape Town investigates. Johan Reinecke is a wine grower, an organic one. The okay. proof is this greenery, growing wild between the vines. I what some might mistake for weeds way. have an yeah. important job to do. Over here, for example, is another form of a, a nitrogen fixer. It also has the ability to put nitrogen in the soil. And when you farm organically, you realize that the higher the humus and the organic content of the soil, the more resistant naturally the vines become against disease. This grower uses no pesticides. His soil is completely different from his neighbor, so who uses conventional farming methods. You know, it's almost like a brick. It's rock hard. So this, uh, this is not good. You've got moss growing there. The soil is essentially dead. And what you have to do is you have to give fertilizer for these guys to grow. Johan has his soil analyzed regularly by the University of Stellenbosch. The lab checks the levels of fermentation achieved by different methods, and organic farming is more profitable than people realize. The compromise on yield is really, I think, just from the beginning, when you really are still in the early stages. But I think you do reach a certain um, peak where you, do, you, know, you end up with better yields uh, without having to apply any chemicals. The trend to natural methods is a popular one in this area, where farming is becoming industrial. There are regular cases of chemical poisoning and some victims have gone to court. Werner has often fallen sick since he came to live here. We, we don't always even know what the consequences are. And at some stage it will be too late. So I don't think that that is not the way to go. We can change it in order f to be more sustainable for the environment for uh, residents and also to be profitable for farmers. And once again, the, the example exists, Reineke. The Reineke farm offers an alternative way, but Johan says there are limits. I asked him how sore his back was and he says his back's really sore. It's almost, almost broken. So you know, this is the other side of the coin. You remove things manually, it's, you know, it comes at a price. The workers will take a whole day to weed this field. It's more expensive than using a chemical, but it's a question of philosophy. In duck-loving France, the bird has one primary purpose, and that's to be fed up and eventually served on a dinner plate. But let's not underestimate this feathered creature. In Japan, farmers have rediscovered the role that ducks can play in rice paddy fields, acting as nature's natural pesticide. This next report from our correspondents in the north of Tokyo. This farmer in a rice growing area near Tokyo once used lots of pesticides on his crops. These days, he uses ducks. Like an advancing battalion, the hungry ducks clear the field of weeds and plant destroying insects one bite at a time. It would be much easier to use pesticides, but we don't know their effect in the long run. We could also use humans, but that would be much more expensive. So we prefer to use ducks who work in a very systematic manner. On top of eradicating insects, ducks will help till the soil with their webbed feet. But there are other advantages. Their waste is a good fertilizer, so we don't have to use much of our own. Then we can eat the ducks when the season is over. Tayama bought his 26 ducks a few kilometers away from one of the biggest breeders in Japan. Breeders say that these Aigamo ducks a hybrid of farmed and wild species and naturally suited to organic farming. The main thing about these wild ducks is that they grow at about the same pace as Japanese rice. This way they don't damage fragile rice seedlings. Shina Hideji sells 50,000 wild ducks a year to organic rice farmers. About 8,000 Japanese have latched onto the environmentally friendly technique. It's trendy, but it also makes economic sense. The rice market's getting more competitive. Instead of slashing prices, some farmers choose to add value by getting into duck farming. Ducks have splashed around in Japanese rice fields since ancient times. But farmer Takao Furuno 
highlighted their modern relevance in his book, The Power of the Duck. But farming with ducks comes at a price. According to Haruo Tayama's website, organic rice costs two euros more per kilo than rice grown the conventional way. It is true that we produce less rice with ducks than we do with conventional methods. This is because we use less chemicals. Still, farmers in Japan and around Asia are betting that consumers will be willing to pay a little extra for an organic product. The idea of using ducks in rice paddy fields has already been taken up here in France, which means there's still hope for this little guy. That brings us to the end of this week's show. Thanks for joining us here on France 1 Cat. We look forward to seeing you, as always, next time. <laughs>